Christmas Eve. Welcome to our home. We know this year looks really different for all of us, but we thought by inviting you into our home, it might feel a little bit more like we're with family. So come on in, make yourself at home, and let's begin our Christmas Eve service. Welcome again to our Christmas Eve service. My name is Luke. My name is Sierra, and this is our four-month-old daughter, Amira. And we're members of Central Square Church. We hope that in this Christmas season, you've found ways to come together as a community, whether it's in worship or having fun together. However you are celebrating, we're excited to worship with you tonight. You can expect, as we go throughout our service, some liturgical readings, lighting the Advent candles, participating in some worship led by the, some members of the Johnson family, and experiencing some creative storytelling from members of all ages of our church. So traditionally, our Christmas Eve service is a liturgical service. Liturgy is an amazing gift to us because it provides us with words of worship and faith from brothers and sisters who have gone long before us. Though we might be comfortable and familiar with liturgy being something we do in person, where we can hear one another repeating the words in unison, we're excited tonight to worship with liturgy, and we hope that we can hold together as a community, knowing that we're all reading the same words at the same time in different places. Um, you'll do liturgy with us, so uh, we'll begin our service with our corporate prayer, and the way it will go is I'll read the presiding parts, and then you all can join in with Luke for the corporate parts. Um, so let's do our opening prayer together. May the peace of God be with you. And also with you. The Advent time of waiting and preparing is over. We have lit four oh. candles that remind <laughs> us about... Hope, faith, joy, and peace. Today, we light one more candle, and we call it the Christ candle. The Christ candle. Christ, the Son of Mary, the Son of God, is born this night. God's Word has been made flesh among us. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them a light has shined. You, O Lord, have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. His, his name, name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He is also called Emmanuel, for in him God is with us. Eternal God, this holy night is radiant with the brilliance of your one true light.
The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you, as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Thank you, Josh, for those beautiful words of worship. Let's continue with our next reading. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. 
Worship the Lord in holy array. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Yea, the world is established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar in all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the wood sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Amen. We're so grateful for the Christmas story and the fact that it can be shared in so many different ways through music, through reading, through graphic art, and now through our very own Christmas pageant put on by the children of Central Square Church. Get excited. Enjoy. In those days, Caesar Augustus made a law. It required that a list be made of everyone in the whole Roman world. It was the first time a list was made of the people while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone went to their own town to be listed. So Joseph went also. He went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea. That is where Bethlehem, the town of David, was. Joseph went there because he belonged to the family line of David. He went there with Mary to be listed. Mary was engaged to him. She was expecting a baby. While Joseph and Mary were there, the time came for the child to be born. She gave birth to her first baby. It was a boy. She wrapped him in large strips of cloth, then placed him in a manger. That's because there was no guest room where they could stay. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby. It was night, and they were taking care of their sheep. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news. It will bring great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Here is how you will know I am telling you the truth. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a large group of angels from heaven also appeared. They were praising God. They said, May glory be given to God in the highest heavens. And may peace be given to those he is pleased with on earth. The angels left and went into heaven. Then the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby. The baby was lying in the manger. After the shepherds had seen him, they told everyone. They reported what the angel had said about this child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary kept all these things like a secret treasure in her heart. She thought about them over and over. The shepherds returned. They gave glory and praise to God. Everything they had seen and heard was just as they'd been told.
In Luke chapter 2, verse 1 says, Now in the days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus, that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own town. Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David. In order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him, and was with child. While they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. And she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the inn. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity to preach thy word. In this season, may it find a place of rest in the hearts of men and women. Amen. I want to share a story with you. A uh, pastor um, was going to be introduced uh, this Sunday morning, and uh, he decided to dress up like a homeless person. He positioned himself on the steps of the church house. He had a cup in his hand, and he awaited and asked people for change. Uh, one individual greeted him, others snarled at him, and for the most part, everyone walked right past him with glaring stares. As he got up and walked into the sanctuary, uh, he was making his way towards the front of the church when the hospitality team stopped him and escorted him to the rear of the church. He sits, he listens, uh, he greets people as they pass by and uh, people are worshiping the Lord and having a great time in worship. And then one of the elders stands and asks the congregation to uh, give a hand of praise and applause for their new pastor. So as he rises, he makes his way towards the pulpit, the, the applause comes to a silence. Uh, people are in shock. And he gets to the pulpit and taking the, the microphone, he says, good morning. I uh, sat outside and no one except for one person greeted me. Uh, everyone frowned. Uh, people walked past me. Many of you didn't even look at me. Then, when I came inside, uh, there was no hospitality shown towards me. And so, I want you to go home and think about the kindness that you showed this morning uh, to a stranger. And ask yourself, is that the same kindness that the Lord would have shared? And I want you to also think about the type of church that we are and the church that we want to be. And so many uh, began to leave and some remain and they, uh, those that were there were weeping. Um, I want you uh, this Christmas Eve to think not so much about giving, giving. Uh, to your friends and to your families. Uh, I want you to think about what the Lord gave to us, his church. He gave himself. And I want you to just take a little time during this season to think about the type of church the Lord wants us to be because we walk past people every day. Now, I'm not suggesting that we give people money all the time. I ask people, what do they need? Some just want to go buy liquor. I don't support that. If you're hungry, oh, I'll take some money out, but I'll take you there and I'll feed you. I've done that. I had an, uh, hmm, I had an experience uh, some years back. 
it was a Sunday morning, it was summertime, and uh, I normally walk around First Baptist uh, at the time, and uh, I would pray. And this particular morning, I'm walking around the church, and I see this man and this woman, this white man and white woman, sleep on the grass. And in my righteous indignation or my righteous ignorance, I walk up to them and I say to them, wake up, get up, you can't be here. I looked down at the ground and I saw their feet and their, their, their feet were covered with oil and they were just dark, blacker than, I'm chocolate, but they were blacker than me. And I said, don't be here when I get back. So I go inside, preach the goodness of the Lord, how the Lord loves and uh, the Lord can change anyone. Sung some songs, came back outside and they were still there. And I heard the Lord say to me, first of all, it's not your grass. Second, it's not your church. And lastly, that could be you. And so I began to choke a little bit and tear up inside. And I, I, I thought about uh, my actions and I thought about my representation of the Lord. Now, this was new to me, these feelings of uh, really having empathy in the way in which I was having it because uh, we want to protect the property that the Lord has given us and we don't want trash on it. I'm not talking about people. We don't want bottles and things like that. You've been around the church and if you haven't, you will be. And so those things were bothering me, but the Lord was more concerned about my heart and towards these two people. Where were they going to go? Were they doing anything that was going to really uh, disturb the community? No, they were asleep. They were inebriated. And so I had to think about that. And I've been thinking about it, and I'm still thinking about it. We are going to have to learn how to love people and how to address them and give them dignity. The choices that they make, yes, they're their choices. But we can still treat people with kindness. And so this Christmas Eve, I want you to think about the type of church. I don't want to be that type of preacher that I was then, and I'm not. And I still don't have solutions, but together we can think about how we can uh, transform this community for the Lord. God bless you. Thank you and be well in this season of hope, love, peace, and joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Johnson, for that word. A sobering reminder that the images of the Christmas story truly are about our call as a community. Let's continue in corporate prayer. In the quiet of the night, we accept a gift, a personal act of faith, receiving God's charge upon us. In the quiet of the night, we are changed forever by our God and Savior, Christ Jesus our Lord, who is God with us now and forever. In the quiet of the night, we have heard God's truth, a personal word of life given for our redemption. In the quiet of the night, in the quiet of this night, we are called to act, we are called to care, we are called to share a personal story of Christmas, a personal story of salvation. In the quiet of this night, God sends us to be living faith, a personal invitation, a personal voice of hope, a personal hand of service. In our day-to-day -day acts, in our day-to-day -day relationships, may God grant that it be so. Amen. In this quiet night, 
May God bless you and keep you. May God's countenance shine upon you and give you his peace. Amen. silent holy night that was when baby Jesus was born when God became flesh what a joy it is to celebrate the incarnation of Jesus thank you so much for joining us in our home tonight we pray you have a joyful and safe Christmas season from our home to yours let's conclude with our final prayer go in peace and joy to do God's will Thanks be to God. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.